So today we're going to be talking about what's going on in Japan. And there's, there's six nuclear reactors there. Four of them are all in a row. And they're really nice looking buildings, all side by side. And the box that you see is called the outer containment box. There's a horizon there. And three of them have blown up. There was only one that hadn't blown up. I know number, if we call this one, two, three, and four. Uh, I know three, number three blew up near the ground level, and all you see is some beams left over. So all the concrete panels and everything blew off. Number one, I think, blew off at about halfway. And I think number four blew off about halfway to like that and you know if, if you're just a spectator and you see a power plant that's got four buildings and three of them already blew up and people are looking real nervous then you say wow I wonder what's going on well this one didn't blow up because it wasn't turned on at the time that the earthquake and the tsunami came by and apparently the other two that we don't see hadn't blown up because they weren't turned on either either Inside of these, there's a big steel container. It's really, really thick. Then inside the steel container, there's another steel container. Six inch thick walls. They call that one the reactor. And the reactor was where the heat is made. And all a reactor does is make heat. And it's pretty nice having it sit there and makes heat. You could have it create heat for three years without having to goof around with it. Um, inside, there's a bunch of rods. Uh, a friend of mine works in the nuclear industry and I asked him, well, how would you explain to somebody how these things work? He says, it's real easy. You draw a picture of a coffee mug because they're sealed on the bottom, supposedly. And you fill a coffee mug with water. Hey. And then you stick in a hollow tube, a couple of hollow tubes if you like. And you fill a hollow tube up with pellets, They're little black pellets. If you throw them under water, they glow green, greenish blue. There, there's pellets. And the pellets are uranium. Now, if you just put in the rods, stick them in the water, and it's pure uranium of a certain kind, it would blow up. But it's not pure. This uranium lives in apartment 235. And this stuff is only about 1 20th of being pure. It's about 5% pure. And the guys in here are shooting machine guns at each other. And they're the type of guys that if they get hit with a machine gun bullet, instead of shooting one back, they shoot three back. So this guy here, if he gets shot, he goes, ah, oh, bang, bang, bang. He shoots three times. If his bullets come over here and hit another guy, well, he shoots three back. And so there's always these bullets going around. Well, the bullets aren't lead. The bullets are neutrons. And so they're always busy shooting neutrons back and forth. So if you have this stuff at 5% sitting in water, and they're shooting neutrons at each other, they get hot. Because you'd be angry, too, if somebody's shooting you all the time. And they get really, really hot, and the water starts to boil. It doesn't just start to boil. You can see the water's boiling over there. Yeah. You want to be able to turn it off. And you want to be able to turn it back on. Well, somebody came up with a way to turn it off and on. 
they discovered that if you put in some new tubes, let's make them brown tubes. Let's just put one in the middle. A new tube that's full of stuff called boron. If you take boron to a party, nobody likes to talk to it because it's very boring. There's boron in there. And the boron is like the good guy. The neutron bullets are flying around, and they're like a matrix thing. They can do like the slow motion deal. Get, catch the bullets. Yeah, catch the bullets. The boron catches the neutrons. The neutrons can't hit the uranium guys, which get angry a lot. And so the whole thing cools off. If you take the boron pipe there and lift it, it gets hotter and hotter and hotter. You push it down, it gets cooler and cooler and cooler. So now they have a perfect way to create heat to make steam. Then the steam goes out to a turbine, which is just a bunch of fan blades. And it spins like crazy. And that turns a generator, which makes electricity. Now, when you're making these things, people are always worried because if you go swimming in the tank with the uranium bars, here's you swimming in the tank. It's boiling water for one thing, which would kind of hurt. But the neutrons, when they hit people, they kill them. No, that's right. Yeah, that which they can ruin your whole day. Yeah. It takes a lot of neutrons to kill somebody, but it, it'll kill you. And they're worried about that. And they don't want the water to boil away and the thing catch on fire and throw a bunch of radioactive smoke in the air. So they got some big diesel engines out here, just in case. And they got big water pumps connected to them. And the pump can pump in water, take it out here, cool it off, and go back into the pump. Or they can get it from the sea or whatever. And they have big fuel tanks. So each, for each one of these, they have that cooling system. And then they have a backup cooling system. And then they depend on the design for the final uh, safety feature. Well, this plant is 40 years old. After 40 years, the metal in these, in the mug, say, in these big containers, gets real brittle, and it can crack easily. The, the metal in here is real brittle, and so you don't want it to be shocked. It's 40 years old. And the, the guy that I've been talking with works in the nuclear industry, has been working in the nuclear industry for 39 years. And he said, man, that's a really old power plant. And you know, if anything goes wrong with it, they just decide to scrap the whole plant. Well, along came an earthquake, 8.9. Huge earthquake. And the building shook, and they rattled, and they rolled. And apparently, there was some cracks that they haven't told us all about. But from the evidence, some of these chambers, at least some of them, had to have cracked. And the cooling water started to leak out. And they said, never fear. We have a backup plan. As soon as the ground started to shake, within a fraction of a second, a whole bunch of boron rods went kerplunk down into the tanks to absorb all the neutrons. Things were looking good. But when the tanks are old and the fuel rods are old, they don't stop immediately. It can take up to a week for them to stop giving heat. So heat's pouring out, but they turn on their backup system. Yeah, things are good. Temperature is controlled. You go on the radio and say, everything is fine. Don't worry about a thing. And then something happened. Sue visited. Do you know Sue? Her last name is Nami. <gasps> Tsunami came by. Huge wave. 30 feet high. Pump got destroyed. Diesel got destroyed. Fuel tank got blown away. All the cooling water stopped. Second backup system got destroyed. I don't know. And the guys apparently in the buildings, in these buildings, heard this tidal wave coming by. They were just about ready to go out and run away. And then they heard crash, crunch, grind, grind. 
power went off, cooling water stopped. And now, even though these boron rods are in there, it's still producing lots of heat. And the water is boiling inside this reactor. And it's creating steam. And it's also so hot that it turns the water into hydrogen and oxygen. What's that? Uh, about 3,000 degrees. <gasps> Can you melt stuff in that? Oh, yeah. Steel melts at 2,800. Can't even give it an oven to 3,000. No. no. Anything nuclear oven? And he said it, it, you could get up to 5,000, but that would be unusual. Well, the oxygen immediately reacts with some of the metal in the chamber, which is bad, apparently, which leaves hydrogen gas. And when the water level gets below a certain point, you can get glowing red hot spots. And that makes the hydrogen go boom. Kaboom. And it did. It went kaboomy on this one, kaboom on that one, and kaboom on that one. And so now the outer containment building is gone. And one thing they don't tell you in the news is there's a swimming pool in there about 100 feet high. It's 40 feet deep. And each one of these has its own swimming pool. But you don't swim in it. <laughs> Whenever the fuel rods, these guys with the uranium get old, they put them all in these swimming pools. So now they've got 40 years worth of spent fuel rods sitting in the swimming pools. Well, when the building blew up, apparently it cracked some of these pools, and the water leaked out. So now you've got a whole bunch of really, really hot rods sitting next to each other creating stuff. And if you're working there, now you, you throw away the old book. The old book doesn't apply anymore. This is, is known as a disaster. So what do you do? You call the fire department. And the fire department guy said, OK. And they brought all their fire trucks in. They said, bye, we're leaving. And now there's guys spraying water on this stuff, salt water, seawater. And the seawater is their only source of trying to make it cool down enough right now. So hopefully, they've got about seven days for this to cool off on its own. If they can keep it cool enough for seven days, it'll start to cool off the rest of the way on its own. So they're all just desperately pouring on seawater as fast as they can, trying to keep these three things from getting any hotter than they are. Is that, um, did that one there explode? The one this one, uh, uh, that guy here didn't explode. Okay. It wasn't turned on at the time. What's that? No. Oh, it won't shake the world. These, these can't explode like an atomic bomb because it's only 5% enriched uranium. You need like 99% enriched in order for it to blow up like a bomb. So these will just get hot, and they'll create a lot of smoke and ash and stuff. the entire world hot? No. And melt down and send smoke and ash. Yeah, the, the real hazard is the smoke. When they get melted like Chernobyl, there's all this grayish smoke that comes out. And it's burning fuel rods. And it's got something called cesium in it. It's got uranium in it. And some of these, unfortunately, have plutonium in it, which is PU, I guess. Yeah, because it stinks. The plutonium is nasty. So you don't want to be where the smoke is. Our Navy guys have to stay, uh, I think, what is it's like 80 miles or 50 miles away from it. And they're measuring itsy bitsy teeny bits of radiation. Not enough to worry about.